All right, now as we have set up everything, we are ready to roll. So let's jump into your own server with the mid-journey bot. But before we begin, I would like to do the settings. So just do the backslash and type settings. Click on the function confirm. And here are all the settings. The first thing are the different mid-journey versions. So you can also go back to the older versions. They provide some variety, but usually the latest version is the best one but um, for some creative tasks you might want to go back to other versions so we leave that at 5.2 at this moment and then you have the opportunity to select different stylization degrees the higher you stylize the more extreme mid journey will impact the image if you use the raw mode then mid journey is less opinionated so you stick closer to the archetypes that you know from the real world and if you shut it off, you might get more deviating shapes, forms, or products from what you know. Then in the second bar, you see the public mode. I'm in the basic membership, so I don't have a different mode. I cannot go to the stealth mode. So everything I do is potentially visible to everybody that visits my profile. But if you have a pro plan or mega plan, you can choose to go with the stealth mode. I would encourage you to use the remix mode which allows you for every variation to make adjustments to the prompt before it re-rolls the prompt. But more on that later. High variation or low variation um, just means an, if you want to make variations of a chosen picture, um, should those variations be close to the original or can they deviate more strongly? I would uh, encourage you to use high variation because low variation is really low variation. It's very subtle details to change and at the bottom we can choose different speeds higher speeds usually cost also more gpu hours fast mode is all right for now the sticky style i actually never used so i'm also not quite sure what it does before we get going i would suggest to check the raw, raw mode medium stylization check the remix high variation and choose the speed that you like and then in order to start, do the backslash and type imagine. And now you can describe what you wanted uh, to create for you. So I do minimalistic chair design. And there we go. You can see the progress of the images that are being created. All right, so here are the first four images that Midjourney generates for us. It's a chair design, it's minimalistic. It's rather geometric, which is interesting. And what we see now here is the row with U's and V's. The U's stands for upscale and the V for variation. So if you want to upscale either of these images, you have to click the respective quadrant, which is one, two, three, and four. So let's say I want to upscale the first one. I click on U1 and I will get a bigger image of just this, this, this one. Same goes for variation. Let's say we want the variation of the first one. And because we set the remix mode, we are now able to adjust the prompt if we would like to refine it or add words, remove words, just um, to have more control over what we want to do. But in this case, I will just leave it as it is. And at the bottom, we see there's a new prompt that is being rolled for Midjourney to create variations of that design. And this one's really based on the original image. So it will maintain resemblance with the first image. And depending on the degree of variation you chose, uh, you can see either very close resemblance or bigger deviations from the original. Here the variations are done. So you see they all kept this black material style also the background is rather similar everywhere but the light does change in this instance for example it comes from the other side the geometry is quite different but still very geometric and uh, sharp other options that you have here is re-roll re-roll means that the original prompt that you used to begin with is just being done again i like to use this a lot because it will give you or new designs which are very different 
So they are not based on any input image or on no starting point. So they will be four very different and distinct images again. And here are new four minimalistic chair designs. They look very different from the first four, which I think is quite interesting. And now maybe if you go back to the settings, so you don't have to scroll all the way up again. You can also just um, type settings again and the same window will appear. So whatever you prefer, I usually hide it after. And if you now type the same thing, but this time with high stylization, you can see the prompt itself we have this s where 250 was added here we don't have that that was because we have medium and medium is 100 that's the default value you can do stylization between zero and a thousand so you already see that compared to the default value which are more realistic looking let's say or more normal you have much more curvy shapes here and very distinct features that you would otherwise not uh, get. You can even go further, which is already a bit more of an advanced thing. If you don't want to go back to the settings all the time, but you want to adjust the stylization, you can also just use the dash twice and then type a number between 0 and 1000. So, but first you have to do the S and then a space. And then it will just for this prompt use extreme stylization compared to the thing before. And if I now go back again, it will automatically jump to the setting that I have set in my settings. So this is a good way to do just a single prompt in a different stylization degree without changing your settings altogether. And what we get here is also much more extreme. I'm not sure if I would call this minimalistic still. Um, but it's certainly uh, important to play around with the value of stylization. Maybe this one is quite nice. So this is now the third one that I will upscale. And based on this one, on this upscale, I want to show you the possibilities that you have with an upscaled image. So here you can do variations again on all of these images. You can do strong variations, subtle variations, but you can also choose to vary regions only which can be really handy. You can either use the marquee tool or the lossy tool. You can you use both. Here you remove the selection. I would say let's select this region and then we can also adjust the prompt with comfortable cushion. We go ahead and then the outcome will be exactly as the original image but the region that we selected will be changed. So that way we have a lot of control for changes in specific spots. All right, here we are. And we see that all images share the exact same base of the chair. Also the background is the same everywhere, but the region that I selected in the previous prompt is now varied. So I think this is a really cool feature and especially for designers that if you want to work out a detail or want to test different variations on it, just use the region variation and see what mid-journey comes up with. Other options are the upscale. Upscale means just the resolution of the image. This one is now 605 by 605 pixels as far as I'm aware. And you can double that or uh, even higher. Zooming basically keeps the image as it is, but adds more context and environment around it. So we see here now that it added context to the chair what I find interesting now is that it chose to add real context in terms of like plants and some wall decoration, some floor details, which it did not have before. This is because the degree of stylization is really high here. If you have it very low, it will not change the environment at all. So if you use now, a, let's say a more filled image where you have already much more detail and you zoom out there, it obviously will have to add things to the surrounding and cannot just keep it as they are. All right, there we go. So what we see here, now it added this fireplace with some lights that not all of them share 
and it added more context but it all fits the original image so i think this can be really helpful if you want to change your composition or if you want to add more context to the product that you already have but be aware that the resolution does not increase with zooming so you might want to save your original image and then after that save the upscaled zoomed out image in order to have better resolution overall and merge them together in photoshop yeah and the last function the upscale that might be interesting is the panning so these arrows allow you to pan the camera so now we have a square aspect ratio and panning on either direction will give you half a square extension into that direction this can be helpful if you want to change the composition or if you want to create an empty space next to your product for text potentially that you would want to add later or sometimes also products come out like they are cut in a weird way and in order to make visible the section that was cut away you can also pan the camera and see what's left here i typed or used the same image with um, a very low style of 100 and panned to the right to show you that the background doesn't change at all so that the change in the previous example is really just based on the degree of style that you applied okay so here we have now the panned image the square remained the same and it's also the same in all the images but to the right we have now an extension of the room and it will consider the the prompt that we used originally just make sure that it actually adds what you want to add or it doesn't add things that you don't want to add by adjusting the prompt if necessary now i showed you the basics of prompting and the functions of midjourney that you can use and i encourage you to explore them play with them find new ways to use it just um, have fun with it and enjoy the work the next chapter is about getting inspiration from other people's work and looking at your own dashboard so if you go to the midjourney website what you see is the explore page here you can see the work of other people i would recommend to just uh, switch to the dark mode <laughs> but that's just a personal preference you can rate images and if you're one of the top 2000 daily rankers you even get like an extra gpu hour for free it's really based on personal preference on your my images it shows you all your images that you have generated it also shows the prompt that was used the settings that were applied you can copy the prompt if you want to keep working on similar images you can scroll through it you can copy the entire id which also includes more than just the words you have additional factors in there you can download the image and all these things you can do on your personal page if you go to explore you can see the work of other people there's some really cool stuff there you can read the prompt that they were using the settings that they were using you can also even copy the id and the prompt the image if you want to but i think many people are really proud of their work here on midjourney and what they can create with midjourney so i would not suggest to just go in there and copy somebody's work one-on-one -on -one. look at the prompt they are using maybe if you find something really interesting take one or two words that you think would add something to your own work but don't just go ahead and copy the entire thing yeah. and if you have the feeling that you like something a lot you can also go to the profile and that's where you see all the work that the person has done which was not created in stealth mode so for everybody with the basic plan everything is visible they only show the work that was not been done in the stealth mode sometimes it's really interesting to see also different works of the same person just to see if they do things similarly a lot or if they have a certain style that you really prefer and with the search function you can really dig into the stuff that is interesting to you so if you type product design for example you already see this is quite interesting you can look at the prompts what words do they use to get these results and what is interesting about these images try to learn from what you see and try to find the things that strike you or that are in the direction that you are going for for your own work so the search function is really handy here we have chair design i expected to see some of my chairs here but apparently I'm already too late and there are many other people that do 
chair designs. I'm also not sure how they arranged it. So I honestly don't know if it's time based or if it's based on the impressions that the images got. Some of these chairs look really similar to, to the ones that I work out. And if you go into the profile, then oh yeah, maybe this guy, he might be a designer as well, like more graphically inclined, UI design, logo design, some furniture pieces here and there. So this is also a really interesting way to find people that might do similar work as you do. And you can yeah just get inspired by what they do. Just try different words that you think are related to your product or your, your expertise or your field of knowledge, field of exploration, and just try to figure things out. You can also like images. You can then find your likes back and they are all collected together on this page. So you can really build your own library of likes. It might be really interesting.